Hello, I'm Gary R. Allen. I'm the uh, president of the Tundra Speak Society, uh, which owns and operates the Swell Wolf Education Center. Doing a uh, wolf Zoom session uh, today. Um, you can probably see to my right a wolf that is Tundra. Uh, Tundra was 90% wolf. I raised her from a three week old pup. Um, and she, uh, when she died on June the 5th, 2022, she was 15 years and almost three months. In 14 and a half years of her life, uh, Tundra and I educated uh, over 40,000 students and teachers and parents in 300 school visits in BC, plus many uh, community events. Um, she was so beautiful and majestic that uh, when she passed away, um, I had her uh, uh, made into a full mount because I, I couldn't bury her or, or cremate her. Anyway, um, what I want to do today is uh, talk about uh, wolves in uh, about four important concepts. Uh, wolf as a top predator, apex predator. Wolf as a keystone species how wolves influence trophic cascades and also the ecology of, of fear. Um, wolves, their mere presence of wolves on the landscape uh, changes uh, uh, many uh, interactions uh, both with animals and plants. Uh, wolves inc um, increase uh, plant biomass and also enhance uh, biodiversity. And they do that by their presence and what and how they move their prey. Um, so it's, uh, I don't know of any other terrestrial animal that has so much impact upon an ecosystem um, as, as a wolf and that. So let me give you, a, read you a quote. This is from the book, uh, Wolf's Tooth by Christina Eisenberg. Uh, and uh, you can uh, pick the, that book up if you so wish from Amazon or uh, um, Island Press. So this is what uh, Christina uh, said. Um, this is part of this book is part of her master's uh, thesis for a degree and also her PhD. Wolves touch everything in an ecosystem from trees to butterflies to songbirds because of how they influence their prey's behavior and presence and how that in turn affects the way their prey eat and use a landscape. Now, that quote uh, ha has so many elements in it. You know, she talks about um, how they touch everything, how they have so much impact upon from the trees to the butterflies to songbirds. Um, and how they influence their prey's behavior and the movement uh, of their of their prey, and how that impacts upon what they eat and that. So Christina uh, was the uh, um, science director of a place called the High Lonesome Ranch, which is in uh, northern Colorado, and it was a large piece of property owned by a fairly wealthy individual. Uh, they had it was a working ranch, so there was cattle there. But there was also so much space that, you know, um, they uh, interacted, you know, with, you know, the wild animals like elk and, and whatever. And uh, in around 2010 or, or so, um, they noticed a, a wolf that was on the landscape. Now, this wolf, had no doubt, um, you know, migrated down from uh, Yellowstone. And what they found, they, they kept it quiet because they knew that the wolf would be, uh, um, you know, likely shot if it uh, came off the, uh, the, the ranch property. But what they found was that uh, where they used to you see the, uh, the elk, uh, they had moved. Uh, the elk hadn't, uh, weren't in that area um, and that. So, so you know, the conclusion could be, oh, well, you know, they've, they've killed all the elk. Well, no, they just moved the elk and that. So, um, you know, quite a, uh, a an interesting um, uh, 
finding, and uh, it um, um, was uh, uh, very profound in terms of uh, what they saw. <laughs> okay. So if you're going to have wilderness, you're going to need wolves on the on the landscape. Because you're not going to have wilderness if you don't have wolves. They just have that much impact upon all the the uh, the other animals in that. Um, um, so let let's take a look at uh, using that quote. Why do they have such an impact? Well. They are referred to as a keystone species. So what is a keystone species? So um, in 1968, Dr. Robert Payne, uh, a marine biologist professor from the University of Washington, went out to uh, um, on the Olympic Peninsula and, and he observed some tidal pools. And what he found was uh, um, he thought he would do an, an experiment. So in one of the tidal pools, he removed a sea star. And, and the other tidal pools, he left alone. And he observed what uh, happened in that uh, tidal pool that he moved the sea star. And what happened was the mussels over uh, populated that tidal pool and then started to eat all the other um, organisms, the marine organisms. In the other tidal pools, which he didn't touch, they were still healthy. So he put the sea star back into the one that he removed it and watched what the development was. And um, what happened was it came back to being healthy. So at that point, he referred to the sea star as a keystone species. So that's where the um, uh, concept came because in um, um, uh, buildings, a keystone is that in an arch, it's the the stone at the apex of the arch. So when the stone mason, mason puts that uh, stone into the apex, the whole arch becomes, has integrity and strength, and you can take away the supports and it won't uh, fall in. And we evidence that by uh, some of the Roman uh, um, arches that are still standing and the cathedrals and that in, in, uh, in Europe. So that's where the uh, concept of the keystone species came in. So um, to, to be a keystone species, a couple things. One, you have to be an apex or top predator. So your wolves, bears, cougars are top predators, apex predators. But not all top predators or apex predators are keystone species. So let's use the example of the, the bear and the cougar. Uh, bears, you know, hibernate. So they're out of the ecosystem for about six months of the year. Uh, cougars uh, are solitary animals for the most part. Uh, they, um, they're they low density uh, and they have large territories. So low density, not a lot of them in, on a landscape and, and they move amongst large territories. So, and the other reason um, that a key, uh, the cougars and bears aren't a uh, keystone is is how they is how they hunt. Um, so with a cougar, they hunt by stealth. You don't know you're being hunted until you know it's grabbed its claws onto you and grabbed you by the neck. So it doesn't have that impact. Now, with a wolf, you know you're being hunted by a wolf if you're if you're prey. You see them. Um, they, uh, particularly with elk, they'll run, run am amongst the elk because elk are in herds, and they'll be looking for that animal that's the easiest to bring down, the sick, the injured, the old, and whatever. So you know you're being hunted by wolves. And what it does is it moves you, whereas with a cougar and a bear, they don't move you. So the natural foraging behavior of, um, of uh, ungulates or servants is that they are browsers and they're vigilant. So they browse on the vegetation, but they're constantly looking around 
either to see or to hear where the wolves are. And, and so the wolves just have to move them. They, you know, yes, they do kill, um, you know, ungulates and that. Um, but my question is, well, what else do you expect them to eat? Um, and, and what they do is they, they move them. And, uh, if you see, if you've watched the, um, uh, the small, you know, short documentary, How Wolves Change Rivers, which is the reintroduction of wolves into Yellowstone, um, there's a, there's a really good clip of where two wolves are chasing some deer or some elk across this creek or, or stream. Um, uh, and the elk are about 20 yards in front of the, uh, um, the wolves. So when I do presentations, I ask the uh, the audience, you know, children or whatever, do you think that the the elk, when they got to the other side of the creek, stopped to eat some vegetation? And they, of course, rightly say no. And that, and I say, well, why? Because well, the wolves will kill them. See, that's the ecology of fear. the The elk are super vigilant. They know they're being chased and hunted by the wolves, so they keep going. And what happens is that vegetation can now start to grow. And that's what you really found in, uh, in uh, Yellowstone. So the primary um, lesson we learned from the reintroduction of the wolves into Yellowstone is that the wolves changed the 